Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Winnie Ferdokubo and today on my channel, on today's episode, I decided to talk about growing up African. All African parents belong to the same WhatsApp group. So today we are going down memory lane. Do stick by because the video starts now. Are you African? If they did not beat you. Hey! African parents and beat me. In my house, we used to use, my mother used to use wooden spoon, um, wooden spatula. We used to call it garitona in my house. Hey, if they beat you with that one. My mother had cane for all of us. Each person with their own cane. My brother's own was a bit fatter than my sister's own. My own was a bit, was the thinnest cane. All of us had our cane and, what, and cane used to be I think 20 naira for for five or so I can't remember but I remember going to buy cane to keep it in the house for each of us like each one had their own cane my mother used to also have um NYC belts that she kept for like she finished NYC years before we were born but she kept it and when it's time to flog us she would bring it out and she would use it on us she did not spare the road my mother did not spare the road and I'm very grateful to her because 90% of the times that she beat me, I was actually wrong. If I can remember the last time she beat me, I think I was 9 years old and she had just hooked this fresh stew and I, um, I was the oldest in the house at the time because my older bones had gone to boarding school. So being alone in the house with my younger sister, she cooked this stew and then went to work and then she asked me to help her warm the stew. I left the stew on the fire and went to play. When I came back, half of the pot of the stew had roasted. My mother was furious and she flogged. She used this, you know, this pencil that is fat and long. That's what she used to flog me. And ever since then, I don't think I would just burn a pot of food like that. Like, and it, like, it made sense to me because if I was in her position, I would definitely beat the child. So, like, <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, beating is definitely an African parent thing. I language. Imagine if somebody comes to your house and then your mother is like, maybe your friend comes to your house, my mother will not be like, okay. then you'll not be like, but why are you doing your mouth like that? <laughs> who born you? When your mother does, she's asking you who is that, and you better tell her who the friend is. She's asking you who just came to the house. You'll not be like, hey, mommy, what are you trying to tell me? going for parties as an african parent here yeah, my mother when is when they will give us a birthday card sure let me even start like this we're not allowed to actually go for parties parties per se but as children my mother had some friends so um when it's a birthday party they would invite us for the party let's say the party is two o'clock or one o'clock those days when people used to do afternoon parties on like now that people usually put their parties to the twelve o'clock then they'll say the party is 2 o'clock or 1 o'clock and my mother, even my father does it, they will keep us in the house, we would eat, no, we would wake up in the morning, we would arrange what we want to wear for the party because we are excited as children. Even when it was our school parties, we would dress up, we would have breakfast. Just when you think it's time to go, my mother would insist that we have lunch as well. Just when we think lunch is over, she would say, ah, let us wait for, let us just go across the road and just buy this or buy that mm, she was trying to waste time and it took me a lot a long time to realize that she was actually buying time and when i was a, as a child it used to annoy me because i know that when we would eventually get to the party it would be like four or five in the evening and when we would get there and when we would get there the entire party is over all we would have to experience is having to go and greet the auntie uh, and play with the celebrant a bit and we would get um party pack they would even like sometimes the party pack has finished you might give maybe two people to one party pack and it is an annoying me as a child because i always i always saw birthday parties as an opportunity maybe to make new friends or um to have new you know with my brother used to keep a collection of party packs you know those um little souvenirs they give children at birthday parties so 
if you are knowing me a lot but now i'm actually thankful because even now in my life now if i'm going for a party i am not the first to go there it's just how i was raised and i'm grateful actually my mother used to lock me in the house my house my mother wants to go to the market she would lock all three of us then in the house and then go to the market and leave us in the house at some point people start complaining about oh locking children in the house what if there's a fire or something so she will carry us to her friend's house not too far off and put us there and then go to work knowing that her friend to work will also lock us in the house unfortunately one day her friend also had to go out as well so when she kept us in her friend's house my mother discovered me with my big mouth i meant to tell her what we saw when we went out so my mother discovered that we used to go when she used to lock us in the house so that after that time my mother had a new strategy but growing up in growing up where I grew up in Port Harcourt and the period I was growing up, I understand that Port Harcourt was a bit rough to just leave your children in the house without locking them inside. So I'm actually appreciative of the fact that I was locked in the house. I remember one morning, I woke up and my, my dad and mom were having a conversation about somebody within the neighborhood. I just walked up to them and I said, is it that auntie that has yellow hair? Hey! I never know what gave me the guts, but I think, yeah, when I, when I said that, my mother was like, are we talking to you? <laughs> are we talking to you? That's, that's a very African thing to say, but it taught me a lesson. When your elders are talking, shoot, shut up, me turn. <laughs> yeah. Another lesson I learned as an African child is, eat what is available. My house was not that house. It was not poverty or anything. My house was never that house where what I put like eating rice, you want to eat beans. Who born you? If my mother says this is Gary, everybody is eating this night. If you like, be craving anything, anything. Be short. Even as I'm as old as I am now in my 20s, even when I visit Port Harcourt and I stay in my family house and I feel like eating, let's say something, and my mother, my mother says, oh, it's Gary, we're going to eat this. I cannot tell her, oh no, mommy. Me, I want to eat. Even me, if I now finally decide to make what I want to eat, my mother will question why didn't you cook for the others? Like everybody has to eat the same thing, eat the available. That was how I was raised. African home and afternoon siesta. It's afternoon. You're back from from school. You've had your afternoon back and you're not sleeping. No, you eat first and then time to sleep. I remember this time my grandparents and because I grew up in between my parents' house and my grandparents' house. So in the afternoon, it was afternoon siesta time, and I remember after eating, my uncle was like, um, everybody go and sleep. So I went to the room, I laid down and pretended to sleep. My other siblings, it didn't even take long for them to sleep. I've always been a morning person. I function in the daytime, and I find it very difficult to sleep in the daytime. But my siblings being night hours, they sleep in the daytime, and then I'm more active at night. So all of us were sleeping and me, I had not yet slept. I lay down and, and to me, you know how time in your head is flying because you're not doing anything. So in my head I had been lying down for at least an hour. So I came out to the door and I saw the maid and I was like, I want to come out. One was like, no, he's going to flog you, go and lie down. The other one said, yes, 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 come. And the one that said, yes, 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 come was, was okay about my age. And the older one was saying, I should go and sleep or me. I decided to go and look. So I went to him, I went to go and greet him. And who would have to be? He said, is he after, he's after me, yes, but are you supposed to be awake? I said, yes, I've been sleeping for a while, so I'm, I'm, I've woken up. He woken up, he looked at his time. And then he told me that I've just been lying down for what, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. That she better go back and lie down. I said, no, I cannot sleep again. So okay, let him show me how I used to sleep. Uncle brought out the cane and he whipped me. I cried myself to sleep that afternoon. African, <laughs> growing up as an African in Africa, the cane answers everything. Cane answers every single thing. Any prayer you want to, <laughs> anything you want done, cane, cane. <laughs> growing up African, um, in some families, they used to always say, um, um, oh, I wanted to be a doctor, I wanted to be a lawyer, I wanted to be an engineer. My own family, my mom wasn't particular about what in particular you should study. 
but she kept on insisting that every single one of her children actually read a professional course so in my house my mother just told us to read a professional course i was terrible in science class like chemistry i said it for chemistry and math flogged my butt like it flogged my butt my technical drawing teacher wrote on my report card you are advised not to take this course next year I had a D in technical drawing, so I knew that science class definitely wasn't for me. So it was up to art class to take me. So when I went to art class, my teacher, when I went to art class, I found math still not easy as well. So the only option for me that was a professional course was law. And I know that law you would never have to encounter math. So it was just the easiest choice for me and I did not struggle and I'm still not struggling. I mean, look at me today. So. Growing up in an African home, there's one phrase you would definitely hear often. If I hear him, every African home has this says this phrase like, "If I hear him, my mother will beat you, beat you, and she would expect you not to cry." After beating you, she will not turn and look at you and say something. She will not say, "If I hear him." So this morning, I woke up and I decided to go for, okay, I woke up and I was looking for my mom and I couldn't find her that morning. So I decided to check at some of our neighbor's places and I did not even know when I wandered far away. So I went to this neighbor's house and they had Mr. Bean showing on their TV. So I was really excited that I was going to watch Mr. Bean. So I sat back to watch Mr. Bean while I was looking for my mother. And I even forgot that time had gone. I was just there enjoying with the children in the house. My mother just showed up at the door and I was like, Hey, mommy, I've been looking for you. She looked around the yard, she greeted them, and then she said, Let's go home. I went home with her. It was an ambush. As soon as I entered the door, she locked the door, locked the window, brought out my kid. She flogged me that day. That, that was when I learned the lesson that if you wake up in the morning whether your mother or your is around or not around sit your butt on your father's chair my mother is tell me that time we want to go out and say i want to go out play as she says your father is your father's chair too cold warm the chair warm your father's chair you will sit back at home if a teacher reports you to your african parents hey does so this auntie in my class i think i was still in nursery school that time she told my mother that she had asked me to write 1 to 100 and me hating math, I always hated math right from the very beginning. So she told my mom that she had asked me to write 1 to 100 and I was crying in class and saying that I want to change my school and I will never ever ever be in a class again and I thought a lot because I was very upset. My mother that day, she flogged me. I think she told me to lie down on the bed and then she flogged me. That day she used a belt on me. Yeah. And since then, I don't think I, I don't think I, I ever said I would change school or anything like that. I it did not make me like maths, but I just did not that kind of event did not occur again. Yeah. My grandmother growing up in my grandmother's house, she would um ask us like in the afternoon, once after breakfast, she would say, I go and play with your friends. Once it's six o'clock and you're not back home. She would come and then she would say, um, she would stand because her house was um, a duplex and then she would come to her room window and she would shout, Night never come for an eye. <laughs> this is a clock down rich, night never come for an eye. <laughs> and if you, like now if I think about it, once it's six o'clock, even now as an adult in my twenties, I already start looking at the clock. Once it's six or seven and it's getting dark, I know that it is time to go home because that was how I was written. And I think upbringing has a lot to do with how a child eventually turns out. It does have a lot to do with how a child turns out. A child can have innate, you know, innate behaviors, some environmental influences, personal experience, and then um, friends. But then how you raise a child is how the child is going to be. Every other influence will just be secondary. But the one you put in your child that's the primary characteristics and i don't think that anything has changed about me from the way i was raised and definitely that's how i'm also going to raise my children because it works for me why won't it work for you growing up if it's raining my grandmother would wear us like three or four sweaters she would wear these three sweaters 
and then she will put this header rub header balm on inside our nose and on our chest she would rub us balm to keep us warm as a child then i was like this is too much i'll be crying but now as i'm older i just know that there was so much love like she just i don't even know like i had the, i have the best grandmother ever like if i think about it that woman i'm actually i said to add this part because i want to watch this video later and be grateful and every single experience i'm talking about here i did not want my memory to fail me in a couple of years so i'm actually keeping this also to remind myself that this experience actually occurred in my life and i'm very grateful that i got to experience my grandmother and i got to meet her and i got to know her and i got the chance to actually live with her for a while so yeah i'm actually grateful she's like my grandmother when she would give us food my grandmother believed in us eating together because they say when family that eats together stays together so she would put a very big tray and she put our food me my sister and my brother we would all have to eat together so if you're eating and let's say we're eating ever and then you you, you use your ever to maybe go to another person's front in the soup ah she asks whether you're paddling in <laughs> are you paddling in <laughs> Like you have to eat in your front, and it taught me a lot. Because now, if I I'm, I can actually comfortably eat with somebody without the person feeling like I'm doing anything disgusting. Because I grew up eating with my siblings under the watchful eyes of my grandma. When we want to travel to the village, my grandmother used to my grandmother used to put us in this boat. Which me and my siblings used to call it a rubber boat. But later when I grew up, I got to realize that it's not an old, the boat is not a drug boat. <laughs> the boat is you know, this big, very big boat that they would is a wooden boat, but it's very big. They usually use it to go to the market in those days. So she would put us in that or my grandfather and my uncles would enter um speed boats and they would speed past us. Normally the journey from Port Harcourt to my village or Bakana is supposed to be like let's say ten 10 minutes 15 minutes but because we we're on that boat with my grandma we we'll spend like 20 to 30 minutes so they would not get to the house they would um, set up everything as it's supposed to be and then we would still be on the water coming behind them so it was always awesome because my grandmother would cover us with blanket and then she would give us biscuit and bread from under the blanket it was such a very beautiful time like i said and i always say my childhood was the most beautiful thing i've experienced like if i could go back I definitely would. I have nothing called childhood trauma because my childhood was actually blissful. My grandmother would also wake us up in the evening, in the night actually, by 11 p.m. She wouldn't even wake us sometimes. She would, I think, wake us up because we had already gone to bed by that time. And she was a. When I met her, she was a housewife, but I understand that previously before then she used to sew, but she stopped at some point, so she became a housewife, and my grandfather would go to work and then come back, and she was always sitting in the kitchen from what I remember. She liked to sit in the kitchen and cook. So she would be in the kitchen cooking till like 10, making sure everybody in the house had eaten, like every single person in the compound that stayed with them had eaten. So until everybody had eaten she would not get up from the kitchen so most times by the time she get up from the kitchen it's like 11 o'clock so she would come to the room because i usually sleep in her room and then she would come and wake me up and give me pap sweets at 11 o'clock as a child i was like this pap is tasteless but now i don't even care like i would eat that pap again if i get the opportunity tasteless or not like i would eat it no matter how the pap is because i know that each each spoon was a taste of my grandmother's love and warmth and i am very grateful okay guys so i decided to share some of my childhood memories with you guys i wasn't sure if i should do this video because it's actually a very sensitive one for me and you know everybody is always scared of you know sharing things that are precious to them with the world because you're afraid of how people will take it but at this point i'm just trying to create memories and skip some of this these thoughts and these memories in glass because I know the internet never forgets and these are things I do not want to forget myself so I'm sharing with you guys if you can relate to any one of the stories do let me know I would of course like to know 
thank you so much for watching and yeah i will catch you guys later if i eventually remember anything i did not mention i'll probably do a part two otherwise i will come your way again next week with a totally different content hopefully god willing yeah thank you guys so much and i will see you again next week sunday as always bye